Since October, Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson has had more than $350 billion at his disposal as part of the Troubled Assets Relief Program, or TARP funds. So where is the money going and how are businesses going to use it? For more, we're joined by Dan Mitchell, a senior fellow for the Cato Institute. Hi, Dan, and thanks for joining us. Well, how are you? Glad to be on the program. So let me start by asking you, let's take a look at one example. The government has already given $45 billion to Bank of America through the TARP program, but it seems to be unclear how this money is being spent. Do you feel that um, lawmakers are doing enough to ensure that the funds that they've released are being accounted for? Well, first, I think the entire bailout concept is a bad idea. Uh, it's undermining long-term responsibility and prudence in the economy. Having said that, the politicians are playing a bit of a game of bait and switch with us. The whole purpose of all the bailouts was basically just to give money to banks to strengthen their balance sheets. Well, of course banks aren't lending a lot of that money because that wasn't the purpose of the bailout to begin with. It was to make up for the bad loans the banks had made. But the politicians want to pretend to taxpayers that banks are supposed to be sending this money out in loans. So this is just a, a, a bit of political theater going on in Washington. So how can it be done better then? The best way to handle it would be to let the institutions that made bad decisions go bankrupt. Uh, then, and if you have to involve government money, pay healthy institutions to absorb the unhealthy institutions. But the key thing there is the shareholders of the bad institutions and the management of the bad institutions, they get wiped out. They don't get giant multi-billion dollar subsidies. But, yeah, but the uh, consequences the, of that for the economy would be disastrous. I mean, we already know that, don't we? No, the consequences of what they're doing now have been disastrous. When Hank Paulson first decided that the American taxpayers were supposed to bail out his friends on Wall Street, the Dow Jones was 11,350, and look at where it is right now. We should be handling this like we handled the SNL bailout 20 years ago, where the unhealthy institutions were shut down, the doors were shuttered, the management was fired, and the shareholders were wiped out. We handled that a lot better than we're handling this corrupt feeding frenzy of bailouts today. Okay, well, let's talk about some of the challenges to the TARP program. What do you think the main ones are? Well, the main problem we have with TARP, above and beyond the fact that it exists, is that the American people are being told one thing, and the politicians and the interest groups behind closed doors are trying to do something differently. As I said before, this is all about strengthening the balance sheet of the politically connected powerful companies. Now, of course, that means that you're not going to simultaneously strengthen your balance sheets with the money and lend it out at the same time. In order to get banks lending again, we need to have a stronger economy, but everything the politicians are doing, from more spending, more bailouts, is actually hurting the underlying economy. Talk a little bit about the, the role of the Treasury here. Do you think that it has too much discretion in TARP spending? Well, there's no question that the TARP was a giant blank check to the Treasury Department. So nobody knows what the rules are. The rules that we do know keep changing. It seems to depend what side of the bed Hank Paulson wakes up on uh, before we know how the TARP money for that day is being allocated. But one thing we know for sure is that this has been a bonanza for the lobbying community, which is signing up clients hand over fist as to different industries and interest groups around the country figure that the best way to make money now isn't to provide goods and services that consumers value. The best way of making money is to hire lobbyists and stick your snout in the public trough here in Washington. Well, Citigroup and now Bank of America have come back to the Treasury and they're asking for a second injection of capital. I mean, since the federal government now has such a significant percentage of these two banks, would nationalization provide for more certainty? Well, if nationalization was simply a stepping stone towards shutting down these institutions or auctioning them off, to the private sector, that certainly might be better than the corrupt insider dealing that we're getting right now. But I worry once these Why industries... Why do you say it's corrupt insider dealing? I mean, that's a pretty serious allegation. Because we have no transparency. We have no rules. It's entirely a discretionary program. We know that lobbyists are deeply involved with the entire process. Now, when I say corrupt, it doesn't necessarily mean someone's broken the law because the law was written to be a giant blank check anyhow, but it's certainly corrupt from a moral perspective and from the perspective of taxpayers. Why should rich companies 
with rich executives and rich shareholders be bailed out by ordinary taxpayers mm -hmm. around the country. That's not how free markets are supposed to work. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to get rich by providing things people value, not by hiring the right lobbyists.